because we all need to um, move from here and attend to other matters. So Peter knows me well. If you know me, you know that anything about finance is, is key to me, sure. So I think that the center is doing a great job and financial literacy is something that we all have to put our hands together to promote. Okay, so I'm happy about it. But Peter, in as much as you are doing the advocacy, okay, I think that uh, we need to go much deeper and also reach the people that might not have too knowledge, too much knowledge in it. Because in building a sustainable economy, it's about the whole masses, and I mean people you might think that are not too literate. Because everyone is working. So if you, say, if you take, let's say, Madame Ama, and Madame Ama is a trader in the market, she is generating income, and that money has to be well managed, right? So we need to also put up basic terms to make some of these people understand. So you can tell Madame Mama, you are making income, but I don't think that um, probably keeping it in the house. Sorry. So you are making income, but I don't think that you can keep all that money in the house. The part that makes it, you know, risky is that when you wake up, you can see the money and the likelihood of you spending all that money. It's so I think that if we go down to the basic, it helps. Okay, so please, I'll be speaking on financial planning, a must discussed element in our society. And we need to plan our finances. I believe that that is what will make us and will make us. Because as we sit here today, almost every one of us is making an income. But how do we manage that income or plan that income so we are able to live a comfortable life and, and build a comfortable life as well? I must say that I also like the vision of the center we say is we are building an Africa in which all people are financially aware. And that is what we need to do. Let me quickly go to what we have to look at. That is the financial planning. So one may ask, what is financial planning? It's basically a guide in planning one's life from now through the future. So a financial plan is having a guide in planning your life from now to the future. So if you are a student, you need to ask yourself, in five years, where do you see yourself? And how are your finances in, or how are you going to generate finances? So in building a financial plan, you need to look at generating income because you are going to plan on the income, what you are earning. Then second, you need to control that income. That is managing it. So you don't make the income and spend all at a goal. Then the third is making investment. Okay, so when you make the income, you watch your finances after putting it in or investing it or um, make, creating the expenditures that you need, your food, rent, and the rest. The rest, let, what are you going to do about it? You need to invest it. Okay, so let's see how you create that financial plan. I said it's a guide. So in simple ways. One, you need to know your goals in life. That is short term, medium, and long term. So for instance, you are a student now, you know you are in school. Maybe you'll be done with school four or five years time. So your short term goal is that, or maybe probably you are in year three. So your short term goal is I'm in year three. In three years, I need to be done. So when you are out of school three years, what is next for you? Are you getting a job? So that is where the plan starts. When you get a job, you are getting an income. What are you going to do? So are you going to work like 10, five years and you'll still be working to work? I'm not saying that you automatically have to buy a car. But that is where financial planning comes in place. So if you plan well, then it means that you are building your life and you are growing. So one, you need to know your goals in life. You generate assets and liabilities you have. You work out your current financial position or net worth. So what I'm saying is that so when you know your goal and you are done, probably you are working, you know your asset and liabilities is basically your so your assets could be your income then you know um, whether there are any loans expenses you take it out and that is what you own so maybe i just started work i don't have any liability anywhere i earn thousand so your income now is thousand you've planned so you are done with school now you've earned the income so after everything i am left with thousand what do i do with the thousand so that is what I'm talking about. So you work out your current financial position, that is the net worth. Four, you create your plan. So you generate a roadmap for achieving your plan. How do you create that plan? 
So after you've earned the income, now you are going to say that this is what I'll spend every month and this is how much I will put aside so that in the near future when I'm in need, I'll be able to fall on it. This is what I'm putting aside. So in two years time, I'll be able to buy a car. This is what I'm putting aside. So in three years time, I'll be able to buy a land, right? So five, you initiate and start your plan. Don't just have the plan. Some people will draw plans upon plans. People will see you are always busy drawing the plan. You never start. So please, when you initiate or put everything together, you make sure that you implement it, you start it. Then six, you follow and review your plan at least yearly or make adjustments when needed. So you are just started, you've checked everything. At the end of the month, I'm earning 1,000. And the thousand you've decided that you are going to invest 100 or 50 CDs every month. And that is the 50 CDs you've contributed since five years. The prices of things are going up. So even if you are aiming in buying a car, the time you had a plan, the car might be 10,000 or 15, as an example. But by the time you are ready, that car will be a, a 30,000. So how are you going to cater for the gap? So as we move on, you need to make review and see if you have to increase your contribution. Please, is that clear? Mm -hmm. oh, sure. So I'm taking it very basic because I want everybody to understand. So basically, that is a guide to create your plan. Now, having a plan for now or the future simply means creating income. You save and you invest. How do you create the income? I'm talking about income. Someone, what is it that you just finished school and the income is there? So let's quickly look at some of the things you can do to create income. You can get a job with your certificate or experience or your specialty. You can also create or start your own business. You can be creative with your passion and sell it. Probably you are an artist, okay, so you are creative about it, you put your stuff together. You sell it to generate income. You can also sell an asset, it could be land building, to get income and invest. So probably you, you, you I mean, your dad gave you something or you yourself have put up something, you have a land, you have a plan, you want to start, you don't know how to stand, and you sell it, you get the income. I don't think you use everything, at least that is where you can allocate a portion to invest. I also want to say that, so it, that's for everyone general, but if you're a student, I, later I text Peter in the evening whether, what was the target audience, is it student or, so I think we have mistress, we have some students. So if you are a student, you might be thinking of how you can create income. Now there's a lot of flexibility, social media and all, digital lectures and also you'll be able to create a little time. I'm not saying use all your time for studies, but when there are free, free times, there are some petty things you can engage in, like starting a blog, online teaching, video editing, proofreading and editing. Somebody might write a book and need someone to proofread. You can do that for just a little fee. Then virtual assistant, graphic design, event planning, freelancing, etc. So these are some of the areas you can look at to create your income. So in financial planning, I mentioned we are looking at three things, generating income, saving and investment. So someone will ask, now you have the income, how do you save? So this is just some few guys to help you save. Now you set a grocery budget. If I'm saying it, that's, you know, some people when they earn money, the moment they see the money, that is when big thoughts come into mind, big food. The person wouldn't like to even eat, you know, banku and okro, he wants to be, taking chocolates, there is Snapchat, snapping, putting on status so people see that, hey, this guy or girl is from a Pechepe who. So please, you need to set a grocery budget. And note that, you know, in financial planning, as Madam said, health is key. So it's not like you've gotten money, so you are now beginning to eat all the junks. No, you need to eat good, your green foods and all. Then you negotiate. I put it into brackets here and I was laughing. Negotiate everything. But please don't do it too hard. The fact that I'm saying negotiate to save, because if you are going to buy something, they say it's 50 CDs. I mean, politely you could find out and see, oh, is it possible I can get it for a 48? Okay, so I'm saying that you can negotiate everything to save. The fact that I say negotiate everything doesn't mean that you are going to buy such at what you are negotiating. Okay, so please, let's take note. And you know, <laughs> for us to laugh a little, right? So the negotiate bit, you know that you are going to buy something. So you, you are going to remember that, oh, during the financial literacy week, a, a speaker came and said we should negotiate everything. That is when you had really, you know, dressed too tight and you've gone, you know, the appearance. So somebody sees you and says, oh, this guy is well dressed. The lady is well dressed. He's coming to buy everything for me. 
then you just ask of one item and you are negoci <laughs> negotiating for one hour. That's all what I'm talking about. So please, let's take note. Then you can sell unwanted items. Some of us have stuff we, are, we might not use again and we'll keep it or a rot. So it's another way you can save and even create income for yourself. Okay, track your expenses. You have no spend days. There are certain days you decide that I won't spend at all. So that is why it's prudent for you to, you know, um, um, plan plan your every what you want to do save all your coins those coins can buy you water so these are some of the few areas sometimes we've gotten a little money you know when the salary come that day or that first week we are the richest people in town so when you buy the little like, oh you can keep it you can you throw the coins away believe you me if you have some small pots and be putting the coins in it will be a lot if you are able to gather like a 10 cities 20 cities coin if you want some water you can at least get you about five sachet such as or five bags of water sorry so please these are some of the ways you can invest and let's look at ways sorry you can save let's look at ways you can invest you know i think that um, investment and being an aspect of you know financial uh, the whole financial stuff is very low patronized because people have the mindset that investment is for the rich no it is not for the rich so most of the times when someone, there's a lot of definition for investors, someone will say committing money for a period of time to earn income. What I like, anytime I'm called upon to speak on investment, I always say that it is what you can do with what you have. So you don't tell me that I don't have any money at all or all I have is 100. So it's what you can do with what you have because you cannot have everything. What you might have is you are in a category of income, probably 1,000, somebody is in 2,500. That is what you have. So make, make an allocation out of what you have and save. Okay, so it's okay to save small. I wanted to summarize the investment bit into four main parts, but let me dive um, a little deeper with the investment. So easy ways you can invest is that it's okay to start small. It's not necessarily that you start big, so you can save with whatever you have. You also consider saving for a long term. So don't tell yourself that, oh, I'm just going to save three months. If you want to contribute, let's say, 20, 20 CDs or 50 CDs, how much will you get? Three months, probably you'll get 150 CDs. But if you consider the long term, and it's even 20 CDs, you know that, oh, within one year, this is what I'll be able to get. So when you want to invest, you also consider long term. You also consider opening a high yield savings account. When I say that, people are asking me, Madam, this economy, which savings account has high rate? I said high yield because you need to shop around and check. So you go to institution A, savings account per annum, you earn 6% or 7%. Someone will say five, eight. So the one that is higher for you, that is where you go. The good part of savings, when I'm speaking about investment, is that, is what Madame said, you are keeping safe your money somewhere. It is better than not saving at all. So it's not all about the interest, but the fact that you are making contributions somewhere towards a project you want to undertake. So you can also invest in other bank products. So if you don't know, we can explain to them when we go out there, I mean, if you have money, you are generating money, you can move to the bank, you can move to the insurance company, you can move to an investment firm. When you get to the bank, I mean, you say hello to them, you tell them what you want. Oh, madam, I have this money and I need support in, uh, what do you think I can do with it or um, invest with it? They are going to throw more light on it because I know that the banks have investments like the T-bill, the fixed deposits, their cocoa bills, their bonds, they are trust accounts. I love trust accounts. People don't really pay attention. Do you know why I like trust accounts? Trust account solves all my problems. When I'm speaking about financial management or investment and sustainable development. So today, maybe in two years, or if we are ready, those of us working, very soon you'll be having kids or you have kids. How many of us have opened an account for our children? We've not done that. We need to consider. Do you know why? In 20 years when your child is done, your child has come into the world and it is starting from zero. So we have moved back. 20 years forward is like 20 years back. 
So let's say you have a child today, you open a trust account for the child and decide that, okay, you are going to contribute 100 CDs every month into the account. A year is 1,002 times 18 is roughly about 20 or 21,000. So by that time, you can comfortably say, hello, Ama, you are done with school today. I know you are looking for a job. Probably a job has not come. For the interim, I mean, you've learned something. You can start from somewhere. This is what I'm leaving you with. So that is why we all have to support the advocacy for financial literacy. Because most of the time, we are looking up to the government, and yes, it's available. But as individuals, what plans are we having down for our own children? Because we are working now, you know, we are making the money. All we are thinking about is spending, driving, the life, everything. And 20 years time, our kids are found wanting. Because probably by then you might be old. So please, let's consider the trust account as well. When you have money, you can also start a business. When you put money into a business, it's, um, it's appropriate that you manage it well so that you can generate income. When you make profit, you put it back into the business so it grows. When you make money out of the business, you can save, you can invest, you can buy a land, you can um, also buy a property. One good stuff is, you know, when people are doing business in Ghana, we don't save, you don't pay yourself. You, are, you need to because you are working for the business or you are representing your business. What happens in a month? Even if you wouldn't use it, it is prudent that you set money aside that, oh, this is what I've done, my effort in bringing up the business. This is my reward at the end of the month. Look, when you're doing a business and you build up savings, even if you won't pay yourself, allocate an amount somewhere. Because whether you like it or not, when you are to go for a facility from a bank, you will need security. And that is where we, we are found wanting. Now, when we, we, we manage our funds properly, before you get there, it's expected that if you run your business for five years, at least you should be able to buy a land somewhere. Maybe you've gradually developed the land. So when the question of security comes, you can put it in there. Even if you've not developed the land and you've built a little money somewhere, you can say, that, oh, this is what I want. Probably, um, I just need 10,000 to turn around. I've been able to build about 20,000. Can you just fall on my funds and use it as a security so you give me the money? You pay back, the money is still for you. So please, these are some of the areas you look, need to look at. Investment is not for the rich or knowledgeable. This myth is not true. So as you plan to invest, you also have to plan to increase your contribution, as I said. So if you are doing 20, it should increase to 50 appropriately. You take time. But if you need to increase it, you increase it. You should also think about compounding when you are investing. Someone might have 30,000 today, and we invest for over five years, and it's still at 30,000. Because what most of us do is that we invest the money, the interest come, then we, we, we withdraw. And what I'm saying is that if you cultivate the act or build interest around compounding your investment, it grows. So you start with 30,000, probably in five years, it grows to a 40, 45, or maybe 50,000. So we should also look at compounding. Investment also, you have to think about diversification. So you don't put all your eggs in one bas basket, you are getting it. So probably you could do a bit of a, a, a tea bill, you can decide that to, you buy a property, keep down. Now areas are developing. There are so many places when you go now, then <laughs> the prices they mentioned, it's, it's far different from what they are men mentioning now. So you could have, an, you are now starting. Why, why do you struggle to say, oh, I want to have a land here? You can have a land from somewhere. It could be 5,000, 4,000. Believe you me, in the next five years, that land will not go for that price again. So when we are investing, we think about, you know, um, diversifying um, our portfolio. Also know your risk tolerance. Madam mentioned something about risk. It is true that the higher the risks, the higher the investment. It's not that anything you hear at all, you run there. Is, no, you see, the discipline alone and mindset to put something down, to manage your finances, to have a plan for your finances is enough. It's not a matter of I've started now and in one year I'm expecting that that 10,000 I've invested should grow into 50. Then I'm sure you're going to mess up because you end up putting your money somewhere you will not be able to get it back. You also have to make sure that wherever you are investing your money, 
it has the requisite licensing. Not that I have heard that these people are paying so much, so I have run there. Thankfully, some of us who are educated, you can just go to the net and find out from the internet, you know, whether so so and so company is licensing. Definitely, Google will bring some things up. You can also go to BOG website. You can also make calls to such institutions, the regulatory body, to find out. I'm so happy that nowadays we see messages coming around that um, BOG will say, I've seen this so and so group, um, and they are. They don't have any licensing. If you deal with them, you deal with them at your own risk. So know where you are putting your money. Another aspect I say, normally I look at both sides. I look at the educated, I look at the uneducated. I ask myself, how would the uneducated go and Google and know? So that is why institutions are campaigning for excellent customer service delivery. So I always say, the uneducated will hear it by word of mouth or referral. If, because if you go somewhere and you are not treating yeah, they don't treat you well, people will hear. If they are doing well to people will hear. So maybe somebody will say, oh, if you go to so-so and so bank, so-so and so insurance company, so-so and so investment firm, they do so well. So when you do so well, people market you out there. So you put your bits and pieces together and make sure you go there yourself to also verify. If you don't know, you ask. It's time. Okay, so um, I think that through the presentation, the importance and benefits of financial planning has come out, so I won't read it. So all I want to say is that building basic knowledge of money matters is key and important for growing our economy. When people manage and invest their money well, the economy grows. It also minimizes poverty and there is sustainable development. Don't spend another year doing the same thing Let's all drive the advocacy of financial literacy. Thank you very much. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. Thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. And um, I believe when we were, she was giving her presentation, um, she was more about investment, investment, investment. Please, um, she's the branch manager for NIB Tema Branch. So if you hear her talking about investment, investment. Right from here, at the network session, try and get in touch with her. Uh, with all your investment needs, please do well and see her. Since she's passionate about financial education, I believe she'll give you the best of education. Right, so our next speaker.